Hello everyone, and welcome to the Ubuntu Touch Q&A. This is episode 33, recorded on August 18th, 2018. This is the Ubiports Foundation show where we discuss the development of Ubuntu Touch and our community's questions. My name is Dalton, and joining me this week are... Who? Me? <laughs> you? And me. <laughs> oh, Dalton disappeared. Okay, so it's Florian and Marius. Marius. And we also have Dalton, which now went to black. Uh, I don't know. We lost contact with America. Okay, America, are you back? Hello, America. Hello, America, America has America. returned. I clicked the wrong America. button. Or, I mean, uh, <laughs> someone kicked me off. We'll go with that. <laughs> no, I did not kick you. I did not kick you out. I cannot even do this. Me neither. So. <laughs> you kicked yourself. I kicked myself. I did that. Oh, okay. It hurt. It's kicking weak. It didn't hurt. Um, yeah, let's start off with a uh, small meet and greet and saying hello to anyone listening still from Academy. Or so now I have to explain what is Academy. This is a yearly event uh, from the KDE guys. And uh, this year it happened to be in Vienna. So I had the chance to meet um, at least two participants uh, that came specifically for this event to my hometown. Um, and I was very happy to meet them. This is Bushan. Um, Bushan is actually developing uh, Plasma Mobile, or he's also developing on Halium. And um, he was also contributing a lot to Ubuntu Touch, I would say. Um, and um, he's from India. And um, he managed to get to Vienna for a whole week to participate on the uh, Academy uh, event in Vienna. Um, and um, then also we have our nice friend JBB and he's also into porting and um, knows a lot about uh, the base layers, let's say, and um, also he's particularly really good at Debian packaging I've seen. Yes. And um, I met him uh, for a coffee and a little bit of talking uh, for net more or less networking purposes. And I must say it was quite nice. And I would say the next year, maybe, we should participate also in the Academy event. Let's see. Maybe they'll let us in, despite this is uh, this is a KDE event and it's nothing to do with what we are doing. But um, we, could, we could give some nice presentations there. So um, the forthcoming for, for Plasma Mobile and also for Postmarket OS is also quite bright. They, they did a lot of talks about this, it seems. And um, we are, we are happy to see that uh, we're not the only ones developing uh, mobile US alternatives. And uh, they're also quite busy um, bringing up some stuff, especially, of course, for, for the upcoming purism things and so. But um, um, also in general, um, Plasma Mobile seems to be on a good way. Yeah, that's, that was my, my physical encounter. And um, so, yeah. Just some nice greetings and um, have a nice safe travel back home. Bushan for sure will listen to the Q and A when he when he has time after his flight. And um, so yeah, it was nice. Thanks guys for meeting. You got a promise from him for that? He's gonna be listening. No, not a promise. Oh, it's well. just, uh, I'm <laughs> just not, assuming. We, I'm just assuming. If if not, we will fly down to India and set up a PC with the Q and A on it. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your eyes glued to this. Yes. <laughs> oh, and it's running the newest, newest uh, senior version in converge mode. If anyone is interested uh, in looking on the results of that or what the event is about, this would be an HTTP academy, like the academy, but with K instead of C. Dot KDE. Dot org. Just like let's make a small advertisement for that. And now I'm silent already. <laughs> Well, thanks for that report. I'm glad that you had a good time over at Academy. Uh, in in Ubi Ubi, uh, I can't even pronounce our own our own foundation right. In UbiPort's Ubuntu Touch news, OTA four has had its final feature enhancement request closed, and we have hit feature freeze. Where's the dramatic cool. music? We have feature freeze. Let's stress it. Oh, it's cold. It's cold. Uh, bad, bad. It's it's bad pun. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> but 
but what he means with future freeze is basically right now everything is frozen you can't add anything with exception of security fixes and critical bug fixes and this means that we are pretty much less than a week away from release um we we target to release next week the end of after this um this weekend and um so let's let's get a party starting. Started. <laughs> let's celebrate. This has been months in the making. Months. Whew. Yeah, I um, I yeah, it definitely has been overwhelming amount of work, and uh, we have come to the point now where everything underneath is pretty pretty solid. Um, the things on top is still a bit um, still a bit uh, wonky, especially the browser. Uh, the browser is uh, is a thing that we still need to to figure out. We are still working on browser ng, and more browser ng work will come after OTA is out. Since we can ship that with click, we don't need to to wait for an OTA for that. Um, but it's still the browser. Else than that, everything else is working really nicely. Uh, but as we said last OTA, uh, last OTA, last Q and A. Uh, we will keep Vivid open um, since this is a transition period. Still, uh, not every app is ported yet, et cetera, et cetera. The browser is still a bit. So that's why we keep Vivid open. So the transition can go as smoothly as possible. Um, and then in OTA 5, we will have a solid bug fix only release uh, with maybe some minor changes. Um, and and we can then start looking into to transitioning everyone over from from Vidud and and uh, at least we will not close down Vivid. Vivid will be in time and history forever um, but nothing more will go on there other than archive basically correct so some big things some big changes in the six in 1604 OTA4 uh, of course, first we have the update to 1604. Uh, we have um, cute 5.9. I'm reading this off of the change log, and for some reason, I just stuck. Okay. Let's start this again. But uh, we should, we've we added, should mention, yeah. added new power saving features. So we'll devices will go into deeper sleep now, which should help with battery life, especially on the Nexus 5, I believe. Is this correct? Yeah, Nexus, Nexus 5 and OnePlus 1 are the two that, that will benefit from this heavily. Uh, one, uh, and also Fairphone 2, um, the, the Qualcomm Ines devices. Um, and it's also does affect pretty much all devices across, but those are the, the three devices you will definitely notice it on. But um, like, for example, these BQ devices, if you don't have a SIM card in it, they will live for a week, for example, which is pretty insane um with wi-fi on uh so the battery saving features are definitely noticeable and uh it it makes it last a little bit longer before it uh it uh, says the bloop bloop sound it meets it meets its de demise wow <laughs> english is hard today i'm sorry you're, you're yes, very today? poetic no he's very poetic mm. oh yeah let's go with that <laughs> Uh, okay. Going back to Qt 5.9, what you will see, um, that is a lot of a back-end change, but you will see changes Massive. in the interface. You'll see things going a lot faster. Uh, things will be smooth. Um, apps start faster. The OS, I haven't actually benchmarked it, but it does feel like it starts faster. <laughs> mm, well, the, uh, Unity 8 itself starts faster, um, but on a laning uh, components, it's pretty much the same, uh, like the startup sequence um, from LightDM, since those parts haven't really changed that much. But from when Unity is basically when you see the spinner, um, things is faster. Right, and that's the just the Ubuntu touch screen, not not this one. Uh, not not the Google one. In the base image, we are now shipping Pi other side. Uh, cute web engine and the cute quick controls too. So those are all 
those will all be nice for developers. So right now, if you want to ship an app for uh, Xenial with for OTA4 16.04, we should start calling it 16.04 since now we've hit release. Um, you can start using PyOtherSide for Python bindings to your QML, Qt Web Engine for a, the new browser engine. And you can use that directly from QML. There's no need to um, use Ubuntu.web, which we're planning on transitioning in OTA5. We have the QA script system, which helps you to test changes to Ubuntu Touch. So uh, if we update Unity 8 and we need people to test that update to Unity 8, QA scripts will help you do that. There are new keyboard layouts. I forget which ones those are exactly. Um, the key... Yeah, Florian. Oh, oh, don't ask me that, that, that quickly, but um, I can have a look if you like. Okay. I'm back in a minute. Talk about something else. <laughs> and to end, over 100 backlog issues, so things that um, broke between OTA 3 and 4 with the upgrade to Xenial, as well as some other uh, bugs that have either been in Ubuntu Touch for some time or were just introduced. Wow. So there will be the Swiss French keyboard, there will be the Turkish keyboard, and there will be hmm, updates at least to uh, the Portuguese one and to Azerbaijan. Some Persian layout fixes and so a lot of stuff actually. So there were a lot of people lot contributing of keyboard to the keyboard, um, which is quite good because some of the keyboards seem to have been awkward in the in the corresponding languages. Um, yeah. So I like that. Oh, I and we added it? the graphical libertine container manager in settings that you can use. Oh yes, the one with the <laughs> magic hat. Libertine has always had the magic hat. Yeah, it's the best perfect, part. the magic hat. <laughs> <laughs> because it's really magic, isn't it? I mean, it's completely impossible what it does. Right. Okay, I, I don't get you triggered on that one. I, I retreat. <laughs> right. It does well, like um, yeah, it's in, impossible in, in, in many ways, I guess. Um, just like Segfaults. But... Um, so let's continue down the the change log list. But I I I, I want to to stress this enough that like the major change in this release isn't what we change, it's what, well no, it's not it isn't what you see, it's what you don't see. Um, so the changes underneath are humongous. It's um pretty much every package is touched, every package is updated, uh, and every package has newer security fixes and are constantly getting security fixes from upstream canonical and from from uh, debian after that or it's debian ubuntu and then us uh, so we have three layers of security fixes which is uh, pretty good All right we're benefiting from canonical security team now and debians um doby in the supergroup is uh, stressing to me that it is not a magic hat, it is a top hat, which is commonly used by magicians for pulling magical things out of. So, there. <laughs> it's a hat. Just leave it at that. <laughs> just, so it's just, for, just for the people that that can, in this... The symbol, if you don't know that it's a hat, it also could be something else. So we just want to stress this yeah? on a side note. If you if you see encounter this in the system settings and you ask yourself, what strange uh, black blob is it? It's a hat. Yeah? So maybe we can redefine it a little bit with uh, with some structure or shape in the future to make it a little bit more detailed. Yeah? Currently, it looks like a, it was rendered to black and white from colorful. So. What else do um, we have? I think we have covered that change log there. Yeah. Mostly. Oh, other things that are exciting with 1604. We held the oh, battery critical. There was that sound. <laughs> that sound. 
that sound. Hopefully you will hear that less when you get on Senior. We have the 1604 Cultural Showcase that we held. Uh, this is, was a uh, opportunity for artistic people in our community to submit their uh, works of uh, sound and photo extraordinaire. And they did. Um, we got a lot of submissions to the Cultural Showcase, uh, and that ended on July 30th, and we've been reviewing and going through them since. Uh, I don't believe I can actually play any of them here in Hangouts on Air, which is a bit of a bummer. I don't have a proper soundboard in here. Uh, no, I do not. I have found all of the things that I cannot do. Um, but there are some really, really good sounds uh, for notification ringtones, notification, yeah, both of those. And we got just a ton of wallpapers that are all great. So I thank everyone who participated in the cultural showcase. We're going to have a blog post up very soon um, about all the submissions that we had, um, as well as we've got uh, places set up where you can see the submissions with their licenses. And they were all licensed Creative Commons, Attribution, Share Alike, or more permissively. Whew. Did you guys see? Uh, Marius, I know I sent you Voyager 1 by Maldito. Probably butchered his screen name. That. I want that to be default. <laughs> yeah, actually. I like it. <laughs> I, broke I like it very much. I, I tried to be more like poetic, but my Englishness just stopped and just it's um it's beautiful. It it is. Um it it really is and I I, I really 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 appreciate the, the time taking off and just making this because it's um it shows something special in a community when you have uh especially just as it just like a, a notification sound and have your own um and to be able when when people call your your phone people will ask you what the ringtone is that and then you get into the conversation of a butter touch phone and you never get uh through that person and that person get tired of you because you talk about bunch of touch they don't know but you get what i mean uh it's um it's just unique is what i'm trying to say and and that's what what's really cool about it uh, right. I see that in live chat. Let me see if I can find the link. I've got it on my disk here. On my disk. Yeah. Um, so I will get that pasted into live chat momentarily uh, while I find that. Um, I just want to thank again everyone who participated uh, because every single submission that you all made um, represented time that you spent to make Ubuntu Touch better. And I also want to thank everyone who helped run the cultural showcase, Joe, Wayne, um, and the rest of the marketing team. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you, to put it quite simply. Okay, I'm going to keep trying to find this um, link for you guys. And um, Florian, do you want to talk a little bit about the document viewer? Yes, sure. Um, there is something uh, critical for 1604, and that is about some apps that are not really um, have not been transferred to to 1604 uh, already some some weeks ago. And uh, we finally found out we we had no real solution for the doc viewer. And um, the second thing I'm a little bit covering now is is the status of Deco for the email client. So the doc viewer um, was just to uh, had to be brought to a state that it can be compiled for for 1604, and that it works with the actual libraries from from LibreOffice for showing the LibreOffice documents and so. And it was quite a rocky ride to get there because um, originally this is um, an app combined um, between some QML parts, uh, some native parts, and then this heavy dependency on the LibreOffice external libraries. But finally, we were able to to get it built um, with Clickable in our standard way that we are suggesting also for for all the apps to be 
to be used for for future building and so i can say okay the current uh, version of the of the doc viewer for xenial will be a little bit huge it's about 80 megabytes or so it's a quite a huge click but it works as far as i know without any further issues except some small color um let's say Hmm. color um, stripes on the on the sides in certain documents we don't know exactly why um but you can look at all the documents pdf is very fast um the libreoffice libraries need to load for the libreoffice documents of course this is a little bit slower but um it looks quite well yeah so the doc viewer is more or less finished and you will be able to continue using it in 1604 so let's talk to me a little bit about the status of deco so we all know there was the old deco and then there was the new deco 2 and they're not they're not the same app basically deco 2 is uh, similar to the to the original one but it's more or less a complete rewrite so the intentional uh, it was uh, meant to be the successor of deco uh, and only work with 1604 or with, with future releases and the old deco is not really transportable or compilable or usable in 16.04 anymore. Um, unfortunately, uh, we lost uh, a lot of, let's say, time and, and, and resources on the way up to here when we said, OK, the community is expecting that we have kind of an email client working when 16.04 will be out. Uh, but then the community jumped in. And um, some of our really helpful people out there, I want to say a big thanks. Uh, made it possible that we have now an alpha stage deco 2 which is actually working with some minor glitches like not showing multiple messages correctly but basically you can access your mailbox you have notifications for your accounts that means you have a pop-up a notification and a sound when there arrives a new email in the mailbox and you, it supports multiple mailboxes and it's a multi-window application which is also very nice so while Deco 2 is not finished, uh, let's say, for all the features it should have, it's on a state that we can say, yeah, it's it's good for testing. And um, everyone who is already on 16.04, you can just install Deco 2 and to give it a try. It's not on the open store now, I think, but there is an alpha build, uh, which we could also link maybe on the show notes or somewhere in, I think, in a forum. There is yes, also link let to me get that. And this is really a good news because with the release of 1604, um, we can have still the basic email functionality and the doc viewer working. So a big thank you for the community. And these two efforts, they came out of the community um, more or less by itself. We, we didn't promote it. We didn't push it so much. So for me, it's a, it's a very strong sign that the community starts working as it should in terms of um, generating new ideas, working on issues, working on stuff, without uh, always having us in the lead. Because we want a self-sustained community. We want people to contribute on their own. And these are two examples that are really outstanding from this. Already. Yes. So keep up this good work, continue in this spirit. And um, while we can, we can give guidelines for the direction where we want to go, we cannot do all the work ourselves but we can now see that community members are willing to help and are also successful helping. So, yeah, really proud of that. So we should especially thank community members Donix, Pumelbach, um, who else do we have in here? Thurgalag for doing this work to get Deco running again and building, with, building correctly. Um, thank you. <laughs> To put it simply. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep you talking, Florian, because yeah, we sure. also want to talk a little bit about the new language support that you yeah. got working, question mark. This is, no, it's not, it's not fully finished, but um, there are some requests from the community also to add new languages to Ubuntu Touch. And while this sounds not so complicated, uh, it's complicated in some small detail. Um, so we can basically add languages as we want. It's always just a question how much has been translated for a particular language and if it makes sense. So the, on the canonical level or Ubuntu level, 
there is a there is a certain threshold. Uh, it's about seventy percent of translations until they would release a language pack for a certain language. Um, I would say for Ubuntu Touch, we can keep it a little bit below that, so we can add a language um, not by certain percentage, but let's say by by the motivate by the grade of motivation that people have to translate or contribute for it. Um, however. The problem is we are depending uh, a lot on Qt and the localization functions inside. And we figured out that um, our uh, small but beautiful Sardinian community, who wants to add Sardinian as a language already for over one year, still cannot do this in, a, in, the, right, in, the, in the way that we just add this language back and it will work. Um, instead, we filed a bug, or we actually uh, connected a bug on the Qt side, and from there we went even to the Unicode organization, because it turns out that some languages on this planet are not connected with a country. So if they're not connected with a country, they will not resolve to a usable locale, and then our, let's say, very smart system of how, figuring out how to translate certain things would just default to English and the C locale. And if somebody remembers in the beginning of Ubuntu Touch, you always had the, the language C in the list of possible languages when you select uh, on the startup or on the on the first from the first steps wizard. When you select your language, there was always C, and this was one of the reasons. This was one language that was not connected to a country. So we filed a lot of bugs. We are waiting now a little bit, but we got the um, the okay from the Qt guys that with Qt 5.12, they will do everything necessary to add. Um, what has been added on Unicode already means that we might have to backport a few things. And we have to take a look if this is possible easily, because we want to go for a long term um, for LTS release of, of Qt, and 5.12 would not be LTS. But it could be that we can backport this, if possible. I will I will try to keep, the, keep everybody updated about it. For the moment, we have to wait until autumn when there is the next release of the CLDR something library uh, from the Unicode um, guys. But it was very interesting to understand what is the what is the huge complexity of, of uh, translation on this planet. And I must say, it would be much more helpful if we don't have so many languages. <laughs> yeah, let's just default to English. Everyone, let's speak English. Can't we pick something a little bit more understandable than English? I mean... <laughs> English is the by far the easiest one I have touched. Oh. <laughs> Norwegian and German is just like, why? <laughs> and here comes the flame. <laughs> well, I I don't understand like the. Marius doesn't understand how languages work. Well, they they have to like put a gender to everything. So. I can't just say it's a cat. I have to say it's a, it's a, it starts with either a female or well, yeah, it's it's hard. <laughs> it's da, das Katze. No, no, no. It's the Katze. The, Come on. Exactly. That's where we are going here. It's it's not it's not D, but it's das Wasser. Yeah, sure. It's completely it's completely logical because it cannot it cannot have. It's neutral. Water is just neutral. There is no... Ah, okay. Forget yeah, it. We are, we are, we are spinning off to some... Neutral. The cat should be neutral. Oh, no. That would be boring if everything is neutral. <laughs> let's let's come back to the to, to, come, to the grounds where we where we yeah. really have something to say about that. Um, let's come back to so, this later. <laughs> yes. I just wanted to say if you have any, any suggestions or you want to contribute to languages, um, of course, there is our wonderful translate.ubreports.com uh, translation server. You actually could add new languages there. The problem is just we, we cannot guarantee that we will pick it up soon. Uh, so for the, let's say, sake of um, for general interest or motivation, just start translating. Actually, a Japanese guy wrote to me. He's looking for other Japanese translators. Maybe somebody out there speaks Japanese. Uh, could ping me, please. Then I can bring you in touch with another Japanese guy, because he wants to uh, update and translate there. So yeah, keep the languages flowing, and that's the last word I'm saying about languages today. <laughs> no more languages. 
That's nice. So I think that's all of our news for today. Mm -hmm. Let's get into some questions. So these questions are taken from our forum at forums.uvports.com. We also take them live from our UVports super group on Telegram, and that's at UVports. Um, you can also join that via IRC on Freenode, hash UVports. And it's not a hashtag, it's just a hash, or you could call it pound. I think I've covered all my bases, so no one's going to get mad at me now. <sighs> our first what? question comes... <laughs> No, Our okay. first question comes from Donix. Have you heard anything new about the status of Libra Pay? Uh, short answer, no. no. Uh, he says that there are some new options for being paid out from Libra Pay, so they've added Stripe and PayPal, apparently, um, but nothing to pay in yet. So um, they said that they will uh, have a new update blog post on their medium blog once they are moved off of mango pay our next question also comes from donix how is the edge channel coming so the edge channel is something that we have proposed and marius has made a proof of concept for it is a new rootfs build so it's another build of ubuntu touch that has packages that aren't compatible with the current system per se, or we aren't comfortable with merging them in on the regular devil RC stable pipeline. Um, if you'd like to comment on how that's going, it is in the forum uh, called proposal, the edge channel under OS. Um, we do have some very good commentary in there, including suggestions to maybe change the name to Holium since it is primarily for Holium porters. Um, and that discussion is ongoing right now. But Marius, how is that image? It's, um, well, as far as I haven't personally tested it with the Holium device, I tested it with, with our devices, of course, um, but I haven't tested it on a Holium device yet. Um, but from the comment I got, um, they are working and I even got um, a newly freshly booted device out of it. Yeah, I'm scrolling that. up in the porting channel at UV Ports Porting. Uh, it was some... There was a picture of someone running it on. This looks like a Mai. I don't know what no. phone this is. It's a Xiaomi Mai 1 or A1, something like that. Ah. Uh, oh, oh, here it is. Xiaomi Mai 3. Mai 3. Okay, 3. three. More UV Ports phones, more love. Yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. So that, and it is running with the Unity 8 dash. Andreas um, and Pac is mostly the one that's working on um, that side of things. He's working a lot with the Mir platform and the Mir Kaf platform specifically, the quarter Code Aurora forum. Most Android devices have that. Um, we're seeing a lot of progress there. So people who were just a week or so ago, not able to boot their device at all, or would just freeze or crash or whatever, have uh, the UD8 desktop showing. So this is um, kind of a big deal, <laughs> mm -hmm. to put it simply. Um, and I personally, oh, I just slapped the microphone. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like we haven't been doing this for a year and a half now. I am personally oh. glad that uh, the community has picked this up and is starting to work on it in depth. So thank you to everyone over there, especially to Andreas, um, because that is making a lot of Holium developers very happy. And me. And they, it makes Marius happy too. Honestly, it makes all of us happy. It's just a good thing. Thank you. Yeah. Marathon2422 asked, how much of a problem will this whole Google device certification for Google Apps be? So I believe this question comes from the new practice from Google, where you have to have a certified device to install the Google Apps on your phone. So basically, um, you need to meet the specifications of Google to use the Android 
ecosystem, basically, because that's the whole thing. Um, even if you install a custom ROM and flash the Google Apps yourself, you still need to have a certified device. Um, and basically, that's all that it affects is using the Google Apps. Uh, it doesn't affect us particularly as you know, Holium, as far as Holium or our LibHybris compat compatibility stuff is concerned. Um, so, well, we might see some. some let's take some positive things out of this because um, this is actually really positive for, for the alternative side. Um, it's basically pushing vendors to, to seek out different options, um, trying to find different options to the Android ecosystem uh, or the Google ecosystem is that is. Um, because this is essentially locking vendors and this is why Google got sued because they are trying to, to monopoly with using their own search engines inside a certified device and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but for us, for the UbiPost community and for Holium and for Plasma and for Sailfish probably also, uh, this is more or less positive because it seeks out vendors to see alternatives and see what's out there and also supporting community um, the one negative that might come up is I uh, might not be able to run in Ambox, but you can always hack around that. Probably. Yeah. And we'll see. We'll see some community member figure it out at some point, I'm sure. Yeah. But right now, it's not worrying and um, it's not uh, taken into effect yet. Well, newer devices, I think it is, but not right, current. So that's Android 9, 8, and 9. Um, yeah. Oh, Android 8 and 9. That is an interesting thing. Um, trouble. Recently, well, yeah, for one, trouble. Uh, recently, the Sailfish, the, I have to get the name right because there's four different projects there. Uh, Mer has started work on the Hybris 15.1 base, and that would be Android 8.1. Um, and I believe it's going to be released with Sailfish 3. Once that is completed and stable, uh, it's open for people to adapt Holium to that new base, which would bring in Android 15, Android API level 15, Android 8 devices, Lineage 15, excuse me. I don't know how they got their versioning. <laughs> It just started at one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just most counted. things do. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. You're very welcome. Um. Yeah. So, community members who are interested in looking into that, who have experience with Holium, or well, yes, with Holium and with this old Hybris, old the Hol Hybris fifteen base. Um, you might want to start looking into that because it is about to be dropped. Not dropped from support, but dropped into the community. Um, another question from Donix. I don't know why I didn't put this with the other questions from Donix. There was recently a donation of devices from Canonical. Which devices were there? And in whispering, was there a GSM Nexus 7? Um, to answer your last question, no, I there were Nexus Sevens in that shipment, and they were the 2013 model, and that's the one that um, that probably sounded great that we need. So that's this one with the camera off center. Um, this is the device that we support, the Wi-Fi only version. Um, let's see. Uh, so there were a few of these. Nexus 7s, I believe there were E5s in that shipment. Am I correct on that one? Um, I'm not sure, but for sure there were E5s because there are so many of E5s on this planet that uh, <laughs> <laughs> that they couldn't ship uh, as much as, as they had, I think. So in every shipment, we will get E5s too. Yeah? Um, actually, there is still one lying here on my desk with original packaging. And um, I'm now a little bit hijacking your topic, Dalton. 
Um, I, the second one I had on my desk, I was giving away to to Ruben to Portugal and send it off with some stickers um, as a small uh, gift and uh, thank thank you saying from our side for a lot of contribution from his side during the last years. So there is a second one here. And while maybe E5 is not the greatest device, we will still have some of them to give away as a as a kind of appreciation for continuous effort and support for the community. Mm -hmm. So maybe they will not work as great as other phones, but still also for developers in need, it can be a good starting phone to learn about Ubuntu Touch or to replace a broken one if they really need for some time before they can find the slow, the, the smaller and smaller amount of uh, devices on eBay or on other platforms. Because I think at a certain point, we will not be able to just buy a device on eBay that is supported. Um, yeah, but um, to be honest, I don't know the real figures. There were just a box of things going our way and uh, we, we're still evaluating what's inside of it. Yeah. yeah, so let's oh. see. It's like a Christmas present, but it's not Christmas. So we're not prepared. Well, <laughs> it's only five months away. Yes, let's wrap it up and then un unbox it for Christmas and then send them around the world maybe at this time. <laughs> I think we'll send them as the need arises. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so no, sorry, Donix, there's not a GSM Nexus 7 2013, partially because that device, is, that device wasn't supported by Canonical. Um, so we don't have one of those. Uh, next question. This is more of a technical one from Dom UBPKM. That's a mouthful. Can there be a terminal placed in the UB ports recovery? So the UB ports recovery, of course, is this. Um, I didn't boot my phone right to show it off. Um, basically, it has all of the software that we need to update phones. So it has the system image tools in it and the diffing and all that fun stuff. And it shows a little interface that lets you install Ubuntu or Android zips, which would be to upgrade the system image or the Ubuntu um, images. Um, so that's this guy here. Uh, anyone who's not watching the video version, sorry. Uh, and his question is if there can be a terminal put in this with like an on-screen keyboard. That does exist in, what's it called, TWRP, T-W-R-P, the Team Win Recovery. So it would be possible, but I don't, no one has really put in a lot of time to the UB ports recovery lately. So it's just kind of this. We did change the uh, image up top to actually say the correct capitalization of UB ports and have the little Yumi logo. But we haven't put a lot of time into that lately. If someone wanted to get min UI running and all that, it would be quite a um, it would be quite a task to be clear to get that all working, but it is possible. Um, the main the main reason that Dom was asking for this was for um, if someone were to break their device while on the road and needed to fix it real quick, um, I can see where that's coming from, but I don't see it as um, something that we can really take on right now. So thank you for the question. That is about where you'd go through to kind of look into it. Um, but I don't think that's something we can do right now. There is a um, ADB is open while you're in recovery, so you can plug it into just about any other device, including another, well, no, because it's not installed by default. Um, but mostly, you know, Ubuntu laptops, Windows laptops, Mac laptops can all have ADB on them, so you can troubleshoot from there. Um, our next question came in from The Possessor. Are there any Holigan ports which are advanced enough to integrate in the UB ports installer? Now, Marius, I know that we have the community channel uh, yes. where we have the Moto G2 
Got to get the number right port. But I don't believe that we've had a Holly import hosted on system image yet. And I think that there are some changes that we need to do to system image before we can do that. We actually have. We have the community channels and we already have the Moto, the the one that you talked oh, about. Oh, I thought that was... Uh, 2014? Right, yeah, yeah 14. I, I think that's... Uh, uh, it's in system image 1604 community valid devil yes titan titan it's already there is building daily okay so that uh, one is Hallium. i'm sorry it, i thought that it was the uh, ubp ooh, ooh. Uh, yeah. Ooh. yeah well i don't think it, it's Hallium. <laughs> well is it? it is a Hallium is based based off Hallium is anyway. based on ubp 5.1 but I, yeah. they are exactly the same <laughs> well uh, the fifth 5.1 are pretty much the same though, but right. 7.1, which is the one that most uses, is not. Um, but the the question, the answer to this question is um, probably yes. Um, but the do you the installer do not have the proper support for the newer uh, community channel APIs. Um, so, um, this is something me and, or well, I have been working on and then I transferred it to Jan, uh, Jan, uh, I, I did that last week. Um, I've been also really slow with sending those to him because it was not perfect and et cetera, et cetera. This and, uh, perfectionist who knew. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, well, it's embarrassing to show unfinished code, but let's not. <laughs> go with that uh, so so basically um, end of the story yes it's possible uh, it just it just need an update to installer um, it's not something that's high priority but if someone wants to help out yes <laughs> I can take a tangent off of that off of the installer part um, so over the week uh, we have on our website, there's a form that you can enter to apply for UBPorts Foundation membership. And that is an official process that I mainly take care of. Um, and we have the Foundation Membership Committee, which is an official legal body that takes care of membership in the foundation. Legal stuff, yeah. Um, we do have a lot of people filling out that form who just want to contribute because it's on the get involved page. Um, and, you know, I've been replying to a lot of people this week on that, or last last week, this last couple of weeks on that. And a lot of people are able to jump right in on the installer because, well, it's Electron and JavaScript. Exactly. A lot of people... What I've been tell telling Dalton for so long. And finally, Dalton said the exact words that I said like two months ago when he asked me why, or a year ago, why I made an Electron. So thank you. So that's been a really good place to get people started contributing to UbiPorts. Um, I'm eating my words. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> oh... So if you're interested in contributing to UbiPorts, but you don't have a device or you're not really sure where to get started, um, the UbiPorts installer might be a good option for you. A mainly Electron app written in JavaScript and HTML. Um, yeah, I'm eating my words. <laughs> or you can also um, do the more application side of things, which is QML. Uh, and some C++ in some of them. Um, and also, if you want to go lower down, it mainly gets to C++ and it gets eventually C. Right. Or if you want to go the indicator route and go voila and go full yeah, out. Don't, don't even yeah. start. <laughs> yeah. Don't even start with the indicators. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, well... Yeah, let's talk about this. Uh, we do have a question. This came from both the forum and the supergroup in different contexts. Um, what exactly is going on with Anbox? 
So, 1604 is frozen. So most of the load, we're going to be honest, is off of Marius now. Um, yes. The big features that we had hit, that we mainly needed him to implement have been completed. So he now has a little bit more time to do fun things. So Marius, tell us about your fun things. And box works on Qualcomm devices. Yay! I, so I would ha I'm, I have been searching. If you have seen my face around there, <laughs> I have been searching for this device. And I realize it's downstairs. I wanted to show you guys, but... Um, he doesn't actually, have it. I have five minutes. Oh, well, now we now we play this elevator music until he's back. Din, 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 din. Please wait, hold the line. Marius is searching one of his 5,000 phones, which is not on his floor level. <laughs> no, so, but to, 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 to rephrase this now, that means, um, if you remember, we had this bug on Nbox that uh, there was a weird color space problem um, and nothing was looking like it should be. And this was all on the Qualcomm devices, and there are quite a many of them outside. So uh, this was more or less the biggest blocker to even try to, to get forward with it. And it seems that our mastermind has found a way to work around it. And that would mean we can work on Anbox as we were working on other parts now, because we can support more devices. And here right. comes the device. So uh, one thing that's big about this is it's not this isn't a consumer release um, no. once it does get released. It hasn't been released yet. Um, there are ha particularly eagle-eyed people have found that Marius has been pushing to the kernels of both the Nexus 5 and the OnePlus One uh, uh, no. with things talking about Anbox. And they said, hey, what's happening with Anbox? Um, so it's kind mm -hmm. of come to a point where we can't push it off anymore. <laughs> That's the beauty of having everything open sourced on public repositories. Uh, people are watching our pushes and commits, and suddenly there is something going on which is called Nbox, and everybody gets, of course, completely excited. And you should be. Okay, let's see. This is one plus one. Okay, so uh, let's present Marius to everyone. There we go. Let's try uh, the settings app. Two frames per year. <laughs> What's that? It worked again. OK. What is that? Let's try another app. Let's try Clock, which is a famous one. <gasps> Just waiting for it to. It, it's a clock. And we'll let's... actually do things. Otherwise, people are going to think it's a screenshot. Well, um, uh, touch input is uh, still a problem, though. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it, it's. Uh, so well, yes, again, developer uh, release. This isn't. We have been committing to all of this, but it is not ready for use. But the baseline is that developers can finally uh, start working on this again because uh, we have solved the hardware bug, and uh, now of course it will take um, more time and effort to get something for consumers and for for end users. But I think the future is bright. Mm -hmm. And this is really huge. Yeah, so, it's, uh, that's our second thing we talked about. It's kind of a big deal. It's um, really a big deal. And and what we have now, we have the basis in, uh, and one of the, the major tasks taken care of, um, which is, is getting it working on this. And um, I have to thank Simon, uh, which is uh, Morphis um, on both RSC and uh, and uh, on uh, uh, GitHub. Um, he is also one of the maintainer of uh, of LibHibers. He's a genius guy, and I have to thank him so much. He's the genius behind this, though. Uh, I take no credit. He's the, the genius. Morphus fixed the endbox. Morphus fixed the endbox. Yes. So. Um, I think these are big words for the for the ending minutes of our Q&A already. And, um, you know, all the things on the end will remain in the heads of all the people more than the beginning. Mm -hmm. so or the middle. Big news, on the, uh, big news always on the end. <laughs> or the beginning. Or the beginning. Just like, it's beginning. just like a song. People only remember the first note and the last note. Anything in between <laughs> doesn't matter. 
<laughs> get the first note right, get the last note right. Dear. Probably okay, so the, good. Our beginning was out here for our end is end box. I think this was a great Q&A again with uh, really lots of interesting stuff. And um, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. You Oops. think, guys? You too? Yep. Yeah. So, well, I, did I break my audio? No, I didn't. Okay, good. Uh, Marius is showing off his not currently working PC for anyone mm -hmm. who is on the video version. Okay, bring that back. Yeah. There it is. RGB. Um, I, Marius, uh... what did you do? I uh, no, I, I didn't do anything. Um, I tried to go the um, the sheep route. Well, I not try. I, I did go the sheep route, uh, like like the motherboard. Um, and uh, what I didn't sheep out on is the new uh, processor because um, it compiled time and all that. Uh, but everything else is pretty much the cheapest. Um, it's even a, an older graphic card because I I don't play games. I don't need anything uh like fancy like that um and the only reason why i have water cooler is because it was 75 percent off so i got it pretty much steel but you haven't told them what you did yet i i i didn't do anything wrong <laughs> it's just that amd needs to send me uh a loaner cpu to update the bios because you need a newer bios to run the newer generation of ryzen generation or this I is the go... things that marius goes through to develop faster yeah well it doesn't develop fast it doesn't so more of a story um pay more and get the new the newest get the newest motherboard you can yeah well um i'm, I'm quite happy with uh with uh with the setup here because um the amount of, of processing power that I get for such a low amount of money is it's quite extreme. Um, I have to praise it for AMD, how they can make so much processing power for such cheap. It's, uh, they are changing the game, as they say. Mm. I tried to put that at the top of the show, but Marius wouldn't let me, so now it's at the foot. Ha, I got what yeah. I wanted. Well, yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to really talk about it because... Uh, it's currently not working because then, or well, actually, I, I could go there. I may break the motherboard route and go. You with may the do that. EEPROM flasher. Actually, I won't do that because I'm. No, don't do that, please. <laughs> or okay, guys, I think this is this is a little bit getting derailed now into PC modding, illuminated uh, <laughs> cases, and water cooling that hopefully doesn't leak uh, into your fish tank. Yeah, so. Yeah, um, we can talk that a little bit more on the after show party. Show. Yes, the after show party. This is a new feature of this Q and A. Whoever can stand us longer than one hour can join this after show party, which is completely unofficial. We will not talk about anything that is really uh, that really matters, but we're just having fun, right? <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, anyone who is currently in uh, UbiPort Supergroup, you can get to that at at UbiPorts on Telegram or pound UB ports on Freenode if you'd like to join us. Um, that's how you can get to that. But that is all for this Q&A. Thank you all for coming to Q&A. Did I say 33 at the beginning? Because it's yes. actually 34. Oh, the everlasting 33. We will stick on that version. We'll, we'll on stay the on 33 forever. Yes, yes. Whoops. Oops, so you have to edit yourself in the in the recording. Let's That's a little it. difficult. <laughs> yeah, 34. Uh, if you'd like to get us during the couple during the breaks in between these Q and A's, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google Plus, Mastodon, Diaspora, Matrix, and Telegram. And all of those links are down in the video description. You can also find us on our forum at forums.ubports.com if you'd like to make some longer forum discussions there. That's all for this week, but we hope that you'll join us again on our next one, which is always announced in our Telegram news channel at ubports underscore news. I need to check that for validity. Yes, on Telegram. We hope to see you all in the next one. 
Thank you all for coming out. Hit the like button. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.